For the next step, we will use training polygons vector data called El Paso Training Poly. Created as sample polygons from point GPS information, approximate extents, and photographs captured on the field. We will join the training polygon class attributes with the image segments generated in the previous step. In the main menu of QGIS, go to Vector, Data Management Tools, Join Attributes by Location. The target vector file is the output of the previous step, Paso Segmented File Shape. Set the join vector layer as el paso training poly shape. The join layer can be defined as el paso st join dot shape. Click run. This new shape file combines the mean and variance attributes with information about the classes captured on the field. We can see the ID and the class for each one, and all of them have mean and variance. Open the Orfeo Toolbox graphical interface by searching for the OSG or 4W shell. Click on it and you'll find it. It is on Start All Programs OSG or 4W, OSG or 4W shell. Navigate to the directory where you have the freshly joined shape on the password stjoin.shape. On the command shell type OTP GUI underscore compute OGR layers features statistics to open a new graphic user interface GUI. The name of the input shapefile is El Paso ST Join. Shape. The XML file containing mean and variance of each feature is El Paso ST Join. XML. Select from the list of features mean for the bands 0 through 6. and click Execute. Notice that a new XML file, El Paso ST join .xml, was created with contents, defining the mean and standard deviation of each considered in the previous step. Repeat the last command by changing the name of the input file to El Paso segmented file shape. And the XML file should be El Paso segmented file.xml. To calculate XML statistics using the same parameters as before, when the green text ready to run reappears, click Execute and then click Quit. In the command shell type OTB GUI underscore train OGR layers classifier, a new GUI opens. A brief description of this classifier is under the documentation tab. It trains an SFBM classifier based on label geometries and a list of features to consider. SVM stands for Support Vector Machine. For the input shape file, we will use El Paso ST Join .shape. The XML file is El Paso ST Join .xml. The List of features that we will use is mean B0 through mean B6. The output model file name is El Paso ST Join Model SVM. On the field containing the class ID for supervision, type the field with the numeric value ID. Click Execute. After finish, click Quit. There is a new model in your directory called El Paso ST Join Model SVM. On 
the command shell type OTP GUI OGR classifier a new GUI opens. This application will apply a trained machine learning model on the selected features to get a classification of each polygon contained in a layer. The list of features must match the list used for training. The predicted land cover class is written for each geometry into a user-defined attributes field, which we have named predicted. Click execute and then quit. El Paso segmented file if we open the attribute table, has a new field called predicted, populated with IDs for each class. Now we can symbolize based on this new field for our classes. Instead of a single symbol, can be categorized The column is predicted and we click classify and we see our six informational classes plus a seven symbol for other unclassified polygons We click OK To see the image behind it, we can modify the transparency of El Paso Cemented 5 dot shape. Now we can see both. The image and the segments already classified on top of it. But, do you wonder how good is our classification in this tutorial? To use our accuracy assessment tools in QGIS, our accuracy assessment polygons using the ID field and the resulting polygon from the classification, El Paso segmented 5, the shape, need to be converted into images, rasterized. First, we add our accuracy polygons. The tool for rasterizing them is on the top menu bar. Raster, conversion, rasterize vector to raster. And eventually we want the same horizontal resolution as we have for our original image, and we click OK. We repeat a similar process for El Paso segmented file to shape. Find on the processing toolbox on the grass yes seven commands on the raster the um, R kappa tool. That calculates the error matrix and kappa parameter for accuracy assessment. Input the rasterized classification result and your raster containing the reference classes in the dialog. Give a name to the error matrix and click run. This calculates the error matrix and kappa parameter for accuracy assessment of the classification result. The assessment report will be written to an output file that is in plain text format and named by the user at the prompt while running the program. This report can be brought into Excel or OpenOffice for formatting if needed. The values in the diagonals mean they do match. The pixels in the classification match the values of the pixels in the accuracy assessment polygons. We can see their percentage of errors of commission and omission and the estimated kappa values. This is just an estimation of how good the classification matches. Below, 
you can have a category description for each of the classes so you can relate this to the classes built above here one through six the kappa statistic for value is a metric that compares an observed accuracy with an expected accuracy kappa values of 0 to 0.2 can be considered as light 0.2 to 0.4 as fair, 0.4 to 0.6 as moderate, 0.6 to 0.8 as substantial, and 0.8 and above as almost perfect. Values of above 80% accuracy in the classification are preferred. The kappa value calculated overall is 0.35, and the classification accuracy is 66%. Both values are a little under what we would like as minimum. With field verified data from around the time of the image collection, your kappa values and classification accuracy will be better than the ones shown in this tutorial. I hope you enjoy it and you learn something. Additional help may be provided by contacting Miguel Pavon at pavonma at hotmail.com or 512-466-3936.